Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Andy Curtis with Transfer Express, and I will be presenting you with Fundraising with T-Shirts. So if you've joined me before, uh, welcome back. It's nice to see you again. It's been a little while since you've had me here uh, with you uh, for your uh, webinar presentation, so it's nice to be back. Uh, if you have not joined me before, then thank you for being here. Uh, we're looking forward to teaching you some new tricks of the trade here in the next 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, so just to get the housekeeping stuff out of the way, the uh, webinar is being recorded. So if you do have to pop out or you do miss it, or maybe you have some internet weirdness or something like that, or maybe we have internet weirdness, God forbid, um, the webinar is being recorded and it will be posted in the next couple days. So uh, you'll be able to go back and see the webinar and all that good stuff. Um, an email will go out to all participants, everybody who registered, an email will go out, including a uh, PDF of all the slides. So yes, you will get a copy of all the slides and stuff too. And if you have any questions as we go, you guys have all found the chat box. So if you have any questions as we go, please do pop a question into the chat box. I will do my best to answer them as we go. Uh, if there are lots of questions or you guys are talking a lot in there, I can't promise I'm going to catch every question. Uh, so I have a helper behind the curtain who's going to be watching for questions too. Um, and remember, she is one human being, so uh, don't overwhelm her either. Uh, but uh, with that being said, uh, we're going to talk about fundraising with t-shirts. This is a cool topic. This is one of those things that uh, we all see happen. And the first time you're presented with this, the first time somebody says, hey, can you do shirts for my fundraiser for fill in the blank? Yeah, of course, our reaction is, well, yeah, I can. I'm not sure how. <laughs> so um, we've all been there. We all know how that goes. So uh, we're going to cover all those bases today. Um, uh, oh, gosh. Uh, so uh, hopefully everybody can hear me. Yep. Uh, we're going to be starting here in just a second. So all right. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So here's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about why T-shirts. Uh, so if you're going to do fundraising, if you have some kind of fundraising to do, why should you use T-shirts? We're going to talk about creating and choosing the art. We're going to talk about apparel choices, how to price, promoting your fundraiser, and then printing and delivering. So we're going to cover a whole bunch of bases here. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, all of these topics that you could possibly want to know. As we go through here, you're going to see a lot of visuals. Uh, all the visuals are going to be things that come from our artwork, things that come from our Easy View Online designer, too, just like you see the one on the slide here. So um, that's the agenda today. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about first why t shirts. Why t-shirts? So if you've got a fundraiser to do, you have somebody who needs to do a fundraiser, for, and this can be for anything under the sun, right? Um, if you've got somebody who needs to do a fundraiser, why should you use t-shirts? So you should use t-shirts because first of all, they're popular with almost everyone. Who does not have a closet full of t-shirts at home, right? Um, and then, you know, of course, we all know there are some people who wear T-shirts more than others. But the point is, we all have T-shirts. We all wear T-shirts. We all use them, even if it's just for lazy wear to wear around the house, whatever. Everybody wears T-shirts. Everybody uses T-shirts, right? Um, and, and plus, on top of it, T-shirts are one of those things that the buyer will use. Everybody uses them. Everybody wears them. Um, plus, the, on the positive, T-shirts help create team spirit or school spirit, Um so, uh, you know, it's great to use T-shirts as a way to bring people together and to unite a group of people. So uh, a good use for a fundraiser, too. So uh, T-shirts are just one of those universal things that everybody can use in some capacity. Um, and that's not to say that there aren't other good fundraiser objects out there, too, like tote bags or like uh, baseball hats. But when you start to get into that kind of stuff, tote bags and baseball hats those are things that not everybody uses. Right. Like I, I can honestly say I probably have a couple tote bags from fundraisers in the back of my SUV that I have not touched, used or thought of since that fundraiser until this very moment. <laughs> so. Um, there are some of those types of things that are also, you know, cost effective and good. And we'll, and we'll cover all these options too. But t-shirts are just one of those things where we all wear them. We all use them. 
We all have need of them from time to time. They stay in our closet for a while, even if it's a fundraiser t-shirt like this, you know, they stay in our, our closet for a while. We wear them a couple times. So uh, t-shirts are just one of those universal things that everybody can use. That's what makes them a great object for a fundraiser. Uh, Jessica, good point. T-shirts make a bolder statement and everybody wears them. You know, there's, there's a, a philosophy out there too, Jessica, right along that uh, thought process. There's a philosophy out there that says that T-shirts are a billboard, right? T-shirts are a medium with which we can share our thoughts and opinions and stuff too. So the other way to look at it also is by doing T-shirts as a fundraiser, you're actually putting the uh, topic, whatever, whatever the thing is that you're fundraising for, you're displaying that on the billboard that is the front of yourself, right? And you're putting it out there for people to see and people will, you know, inevitably uh, people will see your t-shirt and will read your t-shirt. So, uh, you know, t-shirts are a great way. There you go. Uh, easiest marketing, Candace. I agree completely. So t-shirts are a great way to get the word out there even, you know, uh, and there's a whole bunch of philosophy behind the garment industry too, and how, how we advertise and how we wear the things that mean something to us and, and how people see that. And uh, so uh, also good reasons to use t-shirts as a fundraiser, right? So what can you use t-shirts to fundraise for? Now, this is not like a comprehensive list because this list could go on and on and on and on and on. But just to put some of these ideas out there for you, there are tons of places, tons of places you can use t-shirts as a fundraiser for. So school groups, PTA, Booster Club, um, and, and school groups in and of itself, that first bullet point encompasses a lot of stuff, right? Like you can use t-shirts as a way to fundraise for just one of the teams at the school. Like if you've got the football team needs to raise money for jerseys, um, or you're trying to raise money for school sports as a whole, maybe your school's going through a rough time financially and you're trying to raise money for the sports uh, program as a whole. Um, maybe it is the PTA that needs to do uh, needs to do some fundraising. So that first bullet point encompasses a lot of opportunities. And again, all of these groups are groups that you can use T-shirts as a fundraising tool. Uh, so teams, churches, churches too. This is one of those things that in the last couple of years we see a lot more church orders coming through. It's it's interesting to see churches get on the bandwagon and realize that once a church gets to be about a certain size. Uh, they can get in on the t-shirt thing and it can really be useful, you know, and that can be around uh, vacation Bible school. That can be just general fundraisers. It can be fundraisers to, you know, maybe the church needs a new roof or something like that. Um, so uh, church is definitely a, a good one there. Disaster relief. Um, we all know that we uh, we just had uh, Hurricane Ida, I believe, right? So uh, disaster relief. Uh, everybody needs t-shirts and that's a great way to put it out there. Um, uh, elections, levies, uh, nonprofit groups. There's a lot of that. Uh, definitely fundraising for nonprofit groups. Uh, awarenesses, social movements, uh, pride, LGBT. Uh, memorials too. That's always sad to see. We know how that goes, but uh, memorials, uh, when you're raising money for maybe a, a family has lost a loved one uh, early or having a hard time with expenses, uh, memorial t-shirts are always a great way to do that too. And it's, 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 it's even harder to pass up a memorial t-shirt, right? When it's in memory of somebody who is important uh, to, to a family or to a community or something. So that's, that's always a good use for a t-shirt too. Uh, car shows. That's a good one. Anybody else have any good, good fundraising that you've done uh, that I haven't listed here with t-shirts, car shows. That's a good one. Yep. Uh, Karen says, our number one client is a church. I feel that. There you go. See, and it, it all depends on the size of the church and their uh, uh, location in relation to you and all that good stuff. But uh, churches, once they get to be a certain point, can be a fantastic client in general. And a fundraiser is a great way to get in. As a matter of fact, just to put that out there, uh, fundraisers are a great way to get continued business with everybody. Um, if you present a school with a fundraising opportunity, then who's to say they're not going to come back to you for the rest of your needs, you know? 4-H, yep, there you go. 4-H is definitely one of those organizations that needs to do fundraising periodically. Uh, reunions, get together, concert, po poker runs, there you go. There's definitely, or any kind of run, right, Timothy? Any kind of bike run, poker runs, though, yep, I, I, we see a bunch of those. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, Consuela, uh, senior centers, that's a good one. I haven't seen that one before. Um, so definitely, 
<laughs> Colleen, I've never heard that one before. In process of a lemur cage fundraiser. That's definitely different. Okay. Well, see, good ideas all around. So there's definitely a lot of places, a lot of uh, a lot of organizations that can use T-shirts as a fundraiser. Oh, dog show clubs, Nancy. That's a good one too. I hadn't thought of that. Oh, Samantha, sororities and fraternities. Yes, sororities and fraternities always need money. They always need money. So that's uh, that's very true. All right. So let's talk about the artwork part of this. Uh, so let's talk about creating designs. So uh, when you create a design for a fundraiser, there's some things to keep in mind here. Okay. Now you definitely want to be creative. You definitely want to go outside the box. You want to create a design that people are going to want to buy. Okay. But before you really get the creative juices flowing, you start churning out some really good stuff. There's a couple tidbits that you want to keep in mind. Depending on the topic that you're creating that fundraiser for, remember you've got teams or schools that have certain colors that you have to use. All right. So for example here, uh, we fundraiser in uh, our local city here, we're, we're in Mentor, Ohio. And if you were going to do a fundraiser for our local high school's football team, we're the Mentor Cardinals and our colors are scarlet, gray and white. So if you're going to do a fundraiser shirt for the Mentor Cardinals, you're going to want to make sure that the color palette you're sticking to for both the shirts and the design itself revolves around the scarlet, gray, and white. And that's just an example using our local team, right? But if you're doing a fundraiser for a team or a school, remember to keep their school colors in mind. You could have the coolest idea in the world in terms of a shirt design, but if it doesn't incorporate school colors, then it's going to be an immediate turnoff to folks, especially if you, if you live in an area where you've got some high schools that uh, have any kind of like feud going. Like, of course, here in Mentor, we've got uh, Mentor High School versus our local uh, Lake Catholic, our local Catholic private school. So every year it's Mentor versus Lake Catholic, and it's always a big rivalry, right? So in games like that, if you don't have your school colors, then it doesn't matter how cool the design is. I want my school colors. So make sure you're keeping in mind school and team colors. Make sure you keep in mind an existing logo too. Like if we are the Mentor Cardinals, we're going to expect you to use our Cardinal head on whatever this fundraiser is. I'm not going to be inclined to buy a shirt for the Mentor Cardinals that uses some other Cardinal. I want to see the Mentor Cardinal on that shirt if I'm going to buy a, a fundraiser shirt for it, right? So keep in mind existing logos. And that goes for any anything that it may be for. If you're doing a fundraiser for a, a local charity organization, then just stating that organization's name isn't helpful. If there's a, a logo that goes with that organization, you're going to want to make sure to incorporate that in some capacity. Um, and, uh, and this is one of those things, too, where sometimes we encounter organizations that haven't really thought about uh, printing uh, when it comes to their logos. They send you their logo and there's something super colorful, all the colors of the rainbow, right? And you find yourself having to figure out how to make that work. If you're not going to use full color transfers, if you're going to use spot color, how do you reduce colors and all that? So that's sort of a secondary point. But the, the main point here is to make sure that whatever the organization is that you're working with for this fundraiser, whoever you're working for in this case, make sure to utilize their logo. That's the branding we've all been talking about too, right? Um, and then, uh, so will it print for a left chest and a full front giving you bang for your buck? Right. So if you look at the picture here on my slide, we're doing a uh, we're doing a fundraiser here for Harrison Hawks. That's the example we're going to use through the webinar today. Harrison Hawks. And you see in our example here, we have filled up that sheet of transfer paper. If you if you see the, the picture on my slide, there's a dotted line around the outside of my artwork. That dotted line is actually the piece of paper. It's an 11 and a half by 14 piece of paper. And it says that there. I don't know if you can see it's kind of small in the picture, but um, the dotted line is the piece of paper and you fill up the piece of paper on our online designer. Right. So you get to fill up the sheet of paper. You get to utilize as much of that space as you want. So we have truly utilized every inch of space here. We've got our big Harrison Hawks. We've got like a small left chest at the top corner there. We've got sort of a medium size that could be a real big left chest or it could be like a youth size shirt there at the bottom right. 
And then you see we've got the word hawks at the bottom left and the top right there too. So we have really just maximized our space here as much as we can. The whole point is you're not paying extra for a gang sheet. You're paying for that sheet of paper. So you may as well utilize it as much as possible, especially if you're doing a fundraiser. Because the more stuff you can cram onto that gang sheet, the more things you'll be able to offer the organization or the school or whomever you're doing the fundraiser for, right? So um, the whole point being to make sure you utilize the space, you cram it absolutely full of everything there. So some other things to think about when you're creating your design for your fundraiser. Uh, so we encourage you to utilize our online designer, okay, our easy view online designer. And there's a couple reasons for this. Number one, the artwork, uh, it's, it's free. It's free to use the online designer. If you have an account with us, then you have access to the online designer. Um, but most importantly, the thing to keep in mind too is that when you use our artwork, uh, and now given you can upload your own artwork into the online designer, we've got a lot of cool tools and all that kind of stuff too. But if you utilize our online designer and you use our stock artwork, it's actually cheaper. Like the transfer ship faster, you pay less. Uh, and you're seeing an example of it here, how we're using the Harrison Hawks uh, as an example right out of our idea book. Um, good hint here from Cindy. I love filling the gang sheet sometimes with small sleeve designs. That's one of those secrets too. You, you know, there's times where people go, well, I put my design on your, on your sheet, but I don't, I don't know what to fill the gang sheet with. What do you mean? What do I fill it with? You can fill it with anything. <laughs> you could put anything on there. I mean, it could be sleeve designs like Cindy says here. It could be mouse pad uh, transfers. It could be koozies. Everybody loves koozies, right? Koozies are one of those things that get given away at everything these days. Um, so you could put small koozie transfer. You know, I, the whole point is when you have a full size design on a sheet and you've got like that three inches of space on the margin, man, you can do anything with that three inches of space. But anyway, so back to my points here, using our online designer is free. You can create artwork in seconds, especially, like I said, especially if you're using our stock artwork. If you're using our stock artwork, we've done the work for you. We've done all the legwork. We've created the popular designs. We stay on trends here. If there's something that you, you have to give our marketing department is we stay on top of trends. If something is popular, we create a layout for it. We create clip art for it. We get on top of it and we put it in the online designer for you to use. Uh, Valerie, the size of the gang sheets, again, for our screen printed transfers is 11 and a half by 14, 11 and a half by 14. Uh, but we've done the legwork for you, especially when you use our artwork. Uh, so we, we create all the cool stuff. We create all the designs. And, and again, even if you see a design that you think that's kind of cool, uh, but that's not exactly how I want it to look. Remember, you're using our online designer. You can move it around. You can change it. You can add new text, uh, add new clip art. The whole point is to make it your own. Uh, just, you know, you don't have to start from scratch. You can start with our designs and customize it to be the way you want it to look. Ah, now, uh, George or, or Jorge, how, um, I apologize, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, but uh, this is a great question. Uh, he's asking, does it have to be filled with the same logo or can we put different logos and or colors? So this is a, a common misconception. The way that the gang sheets work is that if you, uh, if you order 10 sheets of that design, then all 10 sheets have to be exactly the same. Okay, so if you order 10 sheets of one design, all the uh, all the sheets have to be exactly the same. So now you can put as many different things as you want on that sheet, and it could be as many colors as you want. But number one, make sure to remember that you're going to pay for the number of colors that you've got. So if you use, you know, six or seven colors and you're going to pay for, you know, a six or seven color transfer. And then keep in mind that if you're going to order 25 sheets, all 25 sheets are going to be exactly the same. Okay. Um, so uh, for your unique logos, you can certainly upload your own artwork. Uh, and this is one of those uh, secrets that not everybody knows uh, about our online designer, about Easy View, is that there is an option for custom clip art, uh, where if you have a piece of clip art that you know you're going to need to use over and over again, um, for example, maybe it is your local high school's mascot, like in my case, the Mentor Cardinals, um, if you've got a logo you're going to use over and over and over again, you can send that artwork to us and for $15 uh, or $60, depending on what the uh, circumstances are, um, you can save that custom clip art 
into your easy view online designer for you to use over and over again. And when you do that, you get easy print pricing for that because we've saved it for you and done the artwork for you. So definitely something to think about. That's one of those secrets that not everybody knows about. Um, uh, the um, one of those things that uh, uh, if we were going to talk about the secrets of easy view that uh, everybody uses, uh, definitely the custom clip art. So um, and then the other benefit to easy view here, too, is free mock ups like you see in our example here. We've actually made a mock up on a T-shirt. You can do that. You can make a mock up. And uh, uh, Pablo, uh, so where can I where can I find the mock ups? Uh, when you're in easy view and you're just on the regular easy view page you'll see at the bottom right there is a button for uh, apparel slash share and you'll just follow that link and that will take you right to where you got to go um so uh anyway the um Creating your artwork does not need to be a huge challenge. We've done the work for you. Uh, but like we talked about on the previous slide, just make sure you're keeping in mind school colors, team colors, and any logo that you got to use. All right. Uh, so the other thing to keep in mind here, too, when you're creating your artwork is that this is a great way for you to do some prospecting with that built-in share option. So uh, the picture you're seeing on my screen right now is literally a mock-up that we've done straight out of easy view, straight out of easy view. Uh, Melissa didn't know that. So see, we're teaching all sorts of things here today. Um, so what we're doing here is this is the picture that we've gotten straight out of easy view. And what we did was we made that Harrison Hawks logo. Then we went to the bottom right button that says apparel share and we clicked it and we chose this ash t-shirt out of the uh, listing that you'll see when you go there and we got to place the hawk design on there and then uh, from there you can literally click a button to email that out to your customers you can download it from there you can print it out from there uh, there's all kinds of different stuff you can do there um, and uh, you'll see that there's a watermark here. Uh, now the watermark, obviously you can't read real well here on my slide, but the watermark is customizable too. Uh, and to your question here, Pablo, um, I can put my brand to share with my clients. Uh, so you can use the watermark feature. Uh, now the watermark is text only, but uh, you can use the watermark feature to put your company name on there and boom, it's watermarked with your name and uh, protects your design. So. Pretty slick. Um, so the thought process here being that anything that you create for a fundraiser, this is something you can use for advertising later too. This is a, a, a something you can use to give examples to your clients down the road. This is something that you can use as examples uh, for, um, you know, flyers to create for your business, for examples to show people that you've done. So this is one of those neat things where when you put a design together, you're not putting it together just for this fundraiser. It's something that can go in your portfolio. This is something you can use as an example later to show customers your versatility and the things you can do for them. You know, you never know when you might do a fundraiser for some, uh, or I'm sorry, you might do like a family reunion for some family that needs family reunion shirts. And then down the road, they need to do a fundraiser and they know they can come to you for it because they saw you display these fundraiser shirts. So just things to keep in mind. All right, so let's talk about apparel choices. Um, so it's funny because 10 years ago, 15 years ago, this would not have been such a big topic, but this day and age, there are so many options out there. There's so much um, when it comes to the apparel choices and what exactly you're gonna use for this fundraiser. But there's some things you wanna keep in mind. Number one, make sure you're getting all of your garments. If there's gonna be more than one garment, if there's gonna be several different garments in this fundraiser, maybe you're doing like the football team and they wanna do t-shirts and hoodies or something like that, you're gonna to want to make sure that all of the garments come from the same supplier. Don't use multiple suppliers because then you're gonna have multiple shipping costs and you're gonna have multiple minimums that you gotta hit. Save yourself some money and get all of your garments from one supplier. OK, cover your bases. So when you go to present your fundraiser ideas to this organization, whoever it is, when you go to present your ideas, you don't know what they're going to glom on to. You don't know what they're going to be looking for. You might have an organization that uh, they didn't know they wanted to offer sweatpants in their fundraiser until you showed them you could do it. So make sure that whoever you go with, whatever apparel you decide to go with, cover your bases and make sure you've got the basics, t-shirt 
hoodie, women's fashion, bags, and pants. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I know apparel is one of those things where right now it's a little bit of a challenge. I'm totally with you on that one, Charity, but we all know it's not going to be that way forever. There's some challenges right now for sure, uh, definitely with shortages and stuff. I'm with you there too, Melissa too. I understand right now it's definitely challenging, but once things get back to uh, a semblance of normalcy, we know that we'll be able to go back to our one-stop shopping that we normally do. Right now we've got some unique challenges, but um, the point is to do your best to limit the amount of places you got to go to. Okay. And again, it's optimal to present five to seven items. Okay. Remember, you don't want to overwhelm whoever you're presenting this fundraiser idea to. You don't want to overwhelm them, but at the same time, you don't want to underwhelm them. You don't want to show them just one t-shirt and say, Hey, I came up with this t-shirt and this is what we're going to do for your fundraiser. Show them a couple ideas, right? Show them a couple things to pick from. So. So other things to think about when we're thinking about apparel, uh, other things to think about include sale method. So how are you going to be selling these things? Is this fundraiser going to be online or is this going to be like a physical on-site thing? Okay, because if this is an on-site thing, if this is something that people are going to be uh, buying shirts and you're going to be heat pressing them on-site, like maybe this is at a rally or maybe this is at a football game. Maybe that's how this is going to happen. You're going to raise money for the football team at a football game. So maybe you're doing like an on-site heat pressing on-site thing. If that's the case, then you're going to want to make sure that the garments that you choose to use are a neutral color so you can use them. So it's all well and good if the school's color is dolphin blue, uh, but then you want to make the transfer dolphin blue, not the t-shirt, because after all, uh, how many different places are you going to be able to use dolphin blue t-shirts, right? So the whole idea is in that case, you choose like ash or white to be the shirt color, and then you'd choose the school's dolphin blue color to be the transfer, something to that effect. So if you're going to be doing printing on site, uh, and you're going to be stuck with the leftover garments, make sure to use a color that's neutral. You don't want to be stuck with, uh, you don't want to be stuck with a whole bunch of shirts in a weird color that you're not going to know what to do with. <laughs> um, other things to keep in mind is, are you going to sell online? Uh, because if you sell online, if you have access to selling online, that opens up the sale to a huge audience, right? Much bigger audience uh, and allows you to gather uh, the sale and it gives you uh, optimized pricing and all that good stuff. So definitely something to keep in mind. Um, and we'll talk about uh, how to do online sales. We'll bring that topic up again in just a hot minute here um, on uh, uh, one of the other slides. So... Uh, something else to think about is, uh, are you going to need youth-sized garments? Uh, are you going to need youth-sized garments? So that's something, it's it's an extra thing. Uh, obviously, we know that uh, if this fundraiser is going to include youth, that that's going to be an extra cost. There's going to be extra fees associated with that because you're going to have to get a whole different uh, range of size of shirts. You're going to have to size the transfer. You're going to have to have a transfer for youth size. So Youth sizes are a possibility. It's just going to be extra to do so. Um, so you have to ask yourself, and, and when you're planning this fundraiser with whomever you're planning it with, is the target audience going to include youths or is it going to be mainly adults? So all things to think about. And I, I apologize if anybody is hearing the fire alarm in the background. Apparently we're testing our fire alarm today <laughs> on top of everything else. So uh, forgive me if you can hear that in the background. So let's talk about how to price. So what we've done here is I, I've given you a sample letter that you can include. Uh, and, and again, this is just an idea. I'm not suggesting that you use this verbatim necessarily. Uh, this is just an idea uh, for how to present yourself to, a, to an organization, okay? So let's say that you're going to present yourself to the local high school and you're gonna show them, you're going to present to them this idea that you can do a fundraiser for their sports program. What I've done here is we've given you a sample letter that you can use. Um, so I'm blank and I can help you sell custom apparel for your school sale and you will make money on it. Once your design and apparel choices are approved, we will create a sale website link uh, where your school families can log in and order. We will deliver a week after the sale ends. Don't worry, we will handle payment processing and help you with marketing materials. During the sale days, we will send you a weekly report to let you know how it's going. 
And then again, we are showing um, the idea that depending on how many garments the school manages to sell, here's the percentage of sales that you're going to share with them. This is just one idea, okay? And we'll give you, uh, I'm gonna give you a couple ideas here on the following slides as well. But uh, the concept being, and this obviously happens after you've worked out, here's the cost of the shirt, here's the cost of the transfer, here's the amount of money that I'm gonna make, because remember, you guys still need to make money here too. This isn't something you need to be doing for free. Uh, you should still be making money on this stuff too, at least a little bit. So after you've included that, how much do you have left over in the cost of that shirt if you sell that shirt for 15, 20 bucks, whatever, whatever the price is that you decide to put on that? The point is to work out what percentage of sales you can afford to give the school or the organization or whomever, again, whomever you're working with. Um, I'm glad you find it helpful, Cindy. And again, this is just an idea. Um, I would tweak this letter. Uh, maybe you don't feel comfortable sending reports on a daily basis, or maybe you don't feel comfortable having the transfers done a week after the sale, whatever it is. This is just an example for how to approach. And again, you can change that school sale to, like if I was gonna uh, approach the local LGBT center in downtown Cleveland, I, I would obviously make a couple little tweaks to this letter and, and uh, word it just a smidge differently, but you get the idea. That's a, a starting place at the very least, right? Um, but this is just one way to do the pricing aspect is to guarantee a percentage of the sales to the organization. Now, in this case, I would recommend setting a minimum order, establishing with them, hey, the only way this is going to work is if we sell a minimum of blank number of shirts. And again, this part's up to you. You need to do the legwork there and find out how many shirts that minimum needs to be for you to make at least a little bit of money, right? Uh, so uh, for those of you asking, uh, the webinar is going to be shared with you. Yes, uh, you will get a copy of these webinar slides emailed to you. So uh, for those of you, I don't, hopefully nobody is hurrying up and writing this down feverishly because uh, you will get a copy of the slides. You don't need to do that. Um, we'll send you a copy of all this stuff. Uh, it'll be emailed to you after the webinar. Um, but anyway, so this is one idea of how to go from here. Um, and Brock, yes, uh, we're going to talk about that on one of the next upcoming slides. So hold that thought, Brock. Um, so this is another thing to think about, too, uh, and something to consider when we're talking about pricing. Is there going to be sample apparel? So if you approach a school, or in this case, in the picture, you see we've used a church as an example, Gatineau Methodist Youth Group. Um, so in this case, we're talking about a church fundraiser. Uh, if you approach an organization for this fundraiser, they may ask garments. So there's a couple ways we can handle this. Now, uh, obviously, this is going to be your call in the end. The answer could be no, no, we can't do samples. But we hate to we hate to say no when there's obviously ways around this stuff. So if samples are thrown out there by the organization, they want to see an example of the T-shirts that you're going to make. There's a way to do this, okay? So our suggestion number one, if you're going to do samples, we suggest that you order 25 transfers. And here's the logic. If you're gonna do a fundraiser, they should be able to sell 25 minimum. So even if those are the transfers that you end up selling, maybe they're not gonna sell any more than 25. 25 is a good starting place at least, right? So we recommend starting with 25 pieces. And if they end up being able to sell more than that, you can do a reorder, you can reorder more, but 25 is a good starting place. Um, so then the question becomes, are you gonna charge for these samples? And will potential buyers see the samples? Is this just gonna be a working sample so the church or the organization, whoever can just see the artwork? Or is this gonna be something that, you know, is this gonna be something they hang up at the church and show the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the congregation to actually do the uh, sale, you know, like what is the purpose of these sample shirts? What are you going to do with them? Um, and uh, um, will it increase the sale? Is this going to be helpful? At the end of the day, is creating sample shirts going to be helpful in some capacity? If you're going to be doing a mostly online fundraiser, then maybe sample shirts aren't totally necessary, right? Like who's going to see them? What's the point of creating samples if, if that's going to be a mostly online fundraiser? Um, so these are the types of things to think about. So another uh, idea for pricing here, if you're not going to go with the percentages idea that we presented on the other slide, then here's another example of pricing. 
Um, and, and you see what I've done here is I've broken it down uh, in the way that we're sort of thinking of how the pricing is going to go. So uh, using some nice round numbers, and again, this is all based off of how many shirts you order and based off of how many transfers you order, right? Um, so point being, in the example, I've got a $3 t-shirt plus a $3 transfer. So that means I got six bucks into the making of the shirt. So the commission here is the percentage that we want to give the organization we're working with. So in this case, we're saying we're giving them 25%, so a solid $3.75. So that puts me at $9.75. I want to sell that shirt for 15 bucks, so I'm going to take the $5.25 cents that's left as profit plus labor. So all those things add up together to create a $15 selling price for that shirt. So that's $3 for the shirt, $3 for the transfers, 25% goes to the organization in question, and then you get $5.25 out of each shirt. Now, obviously, these numbers can be tweaked, okay? These numbers can be played with a little bit, and you can mess with these. This is just an idea, right? So this is just something to start with and something to work with. Um, now, if you order, you know, a small quantity of transfers, that $3 is going to be a little bit higher than that. If you order a shirt that's real fancy pantsy, maybe you get some real nice canvas Bella, something high, high class, maybe it's going to be more than $3. Um, but these are just places to start with. Uh, Elvira actually brings up a good point here. Uh, Elvira said, what if they want to change something after you order the sample? Elvira, that's between you and the organization, because at the end of the day, if they want to change something after you've ordered samples, then you're out that sample order. Um, and Dennis here, Dennis makes a good point, Elvira, actually to that exact point, is do a mock-up first so they can't change their mind. I agree 100%, Dennis. This is the whole point of using Easy View. Do that digital mock-up on one of the shirts inside EasyView so you have a picture to show them. Make them confirm that artwork first, then go do the sample. Because if they don't like the artwork after they've seen the sample, well, you okayed this artwork. This is the artwork we talked about. So no, you're stuck with it at this point. Um, so just something to think about. But um, so in terms of, of the pricing, getting back to what we're talking about here, um, make sure to promote where the proceeds are going to go. Okay, when it comes time to start promoting this uh, this this uh, fundraiser, you're going to want to push, 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 push um, to make sure that people know where the money is going to. Okay, and be sure that you have your costs covered. The math here, uh, when you do a fundraiser, the math is super duper important because number one, you want to make sure that you're giving the organization the amount of money that you're saying you're able to give them, and number two you still need to make money. Remember, the whole idea here is for you to still make a profit, okay? Uh, it's great that you're doing a fundraiser. It's great that you're giving a percentage of this to an organization to help them raise money, but you still need to keep yourself afloat, right? You're still, your time and your labor. So you still need to make money here. Do not set yourself at a zero. And again, like I said on the last slide, um, I would set your minimum based on 25, that whole uh, 25 pieces. That's a good place to start, especially if it's a one color. If it's a multi-color design, like a two color design, then you'd wanna go closer to 50 pieces uh, if possible. Uh, again, just looking at pricing and such. Um, and again, a piece of advice here, stick to simple stuff. Uh, stick to one or two colors if you can. Try not to go crazy with the number of colors because if it does get high in color, if you've got something that's all the colors of the rainbow, then you start getting into needing to do digital transfers, which is okay. Those can just be a little bit more expensive than, a, say, a one color screen print. So uh, definitely something to think about. There we go. So promoting your fundraiser. Promoting your fundraiser. Obviously, social media is your friend here. So uh, this is one of those things where promoting on social media has become an art form in and of itself. Um, definitely a, a, a whole world out there, uh, social media and how to advertise. So thanks to our friends at Casey Swagger Shop who let us use this live example from their Facebook page actually of how they advertise on their Facebook page. So when it's time to promote the fundraiser, remember that it's not just, a, like if you're doing a school fundraiser, 
it's not just up to the school to promote it. It's up to you to promote it. Remember, this benefits you. You not only want the school's business, but you're making money on these t-shirts. So make sure you are promoting the heck out of it. Get on all the social media. Get on all of the opportunities, posters in your community. We all know that every, I'm sure all of us have that local grocery store where there's flyers hanging in the entrance of the grocery store, right? Or uh, maybe it's a local diner or a restaurant. I can think of a whole bunch of places just here in Mentor, Ohio, where I know that if I had a fundraiser, I could go hang up posters, for example. Uh, but anyway, social media, social media is definitely the way we all communicate these days. And it's amazing how you can get the word out on social media. So utilize your Facebook, utilize your Instagram. Um, and if you're super hip, if you're one of those super hip folks, get on TikTok, advertise on TikTok. It's, it's, it's difficult. I know it's hard to make TikToks. It could be a little bit on the complicated side, but heck, that's where all the kids are at this point and you get your word out there. So I, you know, um, maybe not what we want to be doing with our time, but uh, definitely a medium with which we can make use of, certainly. So something to think about. Uh, so uh, I know Brock asked about this earlier. So do we have an online portal or an online source that we suggest using? Yes, Stalls Spirit Sale. Um, I recommend you look up Stalls Spirit Sale. Uh, there is, uh, it is a, a platform with which you can create online shops. Uh, you can create a, an online shop that is specific to your fundraiser, where you can create your fundraiser materials, your flyers and all that stuff with the customized URL, send people to that URL to order the items. Uh, Spirit Sale is a fantastic, oh, thank you, Helper. My, my Helper behind the scenes has just popped the Spirit Sale link into the chat for those of you who wanna check it out. Ooh, and a good uh, good one from Holly here. I just bought Spirit Sale yesterday, waiting for my code to start. Good for you, Holly. Um, so Spirit Sale is super duper useful. Uh, this is one of those things where the last, I don't know, guys, maybe two or three years, uh, the last two or three years, you see this happening more and more. And we're at a point here where I'm going to make the prediction that come 2022, 2023, if you're not doing this stuff online with a platform like Spirit Sale, I don't know how you're going to be doing it. Um, there is a cost related to spirit sale, yes. Um, but I invite you, uh, Jacqueline, to click that link and to do a little bit of digging. Um, so there is a cost related to spirit sale, but it is not nearly as bad as some of the other platforms out there. And compared to some of those other e-commerce platforms, you get access to all of uh, all of the neat stalls tools that you have access to. So. Um, and yes, if you have uh, other e-commerce sites, you can certainly use those too. Um, Spirit Sale is just an e-commerce platform for people who don't already have one. So if you've already got an e-commerce site, I would encourage you though to check out Spirit Sale and ask yourself if you're using the right e-commerce site. Um, we have a lot of people that do end up switching to stall Spirit Sale because of all the different uh, tools and stuff on there. But um, the whole point is that I'm making on this slide is that if you don't have some kind of e-commerce platform, Times are changing, and, and I realize that sometimes we're an industry where we like to cling to the way that things have been for a long time. But, man, we're getting to a point where if you don't have a way to do some sort of e-commerce, even if we're talking outside of the fundraiser world, like if you got business with the local high school and the local football team needed a way to order their sweats and their mom and dad shirts through you, an e-commerce platform like Spirit Sale is the easy way to do that. And, and frankly, it's becoming the way that lots of people do it. So change is coming in this regard. And if you haven't looked at Spirit Sale, this is a good time to start looking at it and start uh, start digesting that if you haven't yet. And of course, the old standby paper order forms. So um, we actually have uh, some example order forms that you can download off of our website. Uh, if you go to transferexpress.com and you use our search bar, uh, search bar and search for the word order forms. Um, but these are just two examples and you don't have to do anything super elaborate here. Um, but if you're going to be doing ordering, um, <laughs> I agree, Jacqueline, change is good. Change is good, right? Um, if you're going to be doing ordering with a school, especially with a school, especially you want those kids to go home with order forms, right? 
Um, or if you're working with an organization that has some kind of uh, brick and mortar, uh, like again, using my example, if I was gonna use the local LGBT center in downtown Cleveland, they've got a front desk that I could make a pile of order forms and stick a pile of order forms there at that front desk and that'd be perfect. Uh, instant marketing too, if you put your logo on the order form, right? So again, we're not just benefiting the organization that we're working with, we're benefiting our business as well. That's the name of the game here, guys. So um, definitely something to think about. Uh, the order form should show the design that you're pushing though. And this is where it's gonna depend on what exactly you're doing. The order form on my right-hand side is an example of a real simple order form, just one design. We're not going crazy here. Pick your size, here's the design, wham, bam, done. That's it. The order form on the left, we've given you an example of something where we've done a little bit more. This organization wanted to do a shirt, a hoodie, a ringer style three quarter sleeve, uh, some kind of warm up jacket and a hat. So you see, we've done a little bit more, we've given a little bit more space and we've put an example and I'll give you guys one guess as to where those uh, examples came from. <laughs> they came from Easy View. Uh, so, um, uh, the examples that are down the left-hand side there. So, uh, definitely some ideas again, just, just some thoughts to put out there. Um, Ooh, Patrice with the good hint. Uh, if you print flyers, you can add a QR, QR code to the front to go directly to the spirit sales site. Yes, Patrice, absolutely 200%. God bless QR codes. <laughs> um, QR codes are, are uh, definitely the one of the new popular ways of uh, uh, hooking in the uh, young ones, right? The youngins. So uh, definitely a, a great hint there. All right, and then lastly, printing and delivery of the shirts. So you've done your fundraiser, the orders have come in. Now you know how many shirts need to be made, which shirts, which transfers. So this is the point where you place your order, you optimize your gang sheet, and you press everything. All right, so once the sale ends, that's when you know what you need to make and how you're gonna do it. All right. So uh, this is the point where you start asking yourself some questions too. Like when you do deliver the shirts, how are you advertising your business? All right. If you're uh, doing like, so in my example here, see in my bottom picture, we've used some real generic packaging. That's fine if you're using generic packaging like that, but why not create a sticker? And it, this is, a, there's a little bit of cost here. I'll give you that. But why not make a sticker with your company's name and slap that sticker on that packaging? Don't use just generic packaging. Make sure to market yourself. And if you are gonna use packaging like that, stick a business card, stick something in there. And remember to be uh, unique about it too. You gotta be unique, you gotta be clever in, in your marketing yourself. Uh, otherwise, you're not gonna stick out from the other folks, right? Ooh, Cindy, yes, add a custom neck label. Again, there's cost related to that, but, but to Cindy's point, if you're using our online designer and you're maximizing your gang sheet, there's no reason you can't add uh, a little tag transfer in there. Um, of course, it's all gonna depend on how many different size shirts you're offering and all that kind of stuff. Maybe you don't have enough room for all the tags, but there's an idea. Um, and Caitlin, yes, we do offer stickers as a matter of fact. <laughs> Uh, so yes, if you are going to take my word for it, you can do uh, custom stickers uh, with us. We do that here at Transfer Express, as a matter of fact, and stalls too. Um, but uh, so you've had the sale, you know how many you need, you've got to print them and you've got to deliver them. Um, be sure that this is part of what's discussed when you're arranging your fundraiser, okay? Make sure that you set realistic expectations, guys. If you're gonna do this, if you're gonna go through with this, make sure that you have established with the organization how long it's gonna take you to make the transfers, how long it's gonna take you to mail them out and stick to it, okay? This is part of that marketing yourself and this is part of getting you out there for all the effort you've made up to this point to get your name out there, if you don't follow through with what you say, then you shoot yourself squarely in the foot, right? So again, just remember that whatever you've talked about at the beginning, make sure you cover it with them, make sure you stick with it. 
Woo doggie. 50 minutes. We didn't do too bad there, everybody. <laughs> um, so there you have it. That's that's fundraising in a nutshell. Uh, and then again, I, I'm not going to pretend that we have covered it exhaustively and we've covered every single point under the sun when it comes to fundraising. But what I hope we've done is we've put some ideas in your head. Every fundraiser you come across is going to be a little bit different. There's going to be circumstances. There's going to be something. Somebody's going to ask for something weird. Somebody's going to want to do something weird. But at the very least, hopefully this webinar just presents you with some ideas and some ammunition. So when that opportunity comes your way or when you're ready to be proactive and present this opportunity, because let's be honest, we need to go out there and drum up our own business, right? We survived COVID. Our businesses are still still out there surviving COVID. We need a way to get ourselves out there. So you can't wait for a fundraiser to just walk into your shop, guys. This is your opportunity to present the fundraiser idea to an organization, to a church, to a school, to a business. So um, uh, definitely, definitely some tools, hopefully. Uh, yes, uh, Carissa, we will be emailing out uh, the slides. You will get a PDF of all the slides. Uh, if you have questions, please feel free to email us at info at transferexpress.com or give us a call at 1-800-622-2280. Our reps would love to talk to you about this topic. I encourage all of you, if you do not uh, have a subscription to our blog, uh, our blog is industry award winning and within the garment industry, our transferexpress.com, uh, blog.transferexpress.com, we have won awards for our blog. Our marketing department does a phenomenal job of keeping you guys in the know. What's uh, trending, what's popular, what designs are hot, what products are hot. We give you ideas, we give you flyers, we give you all sorts of stuff. So make sure to go hit that blog. Um, and uh, you can see the recording of this webinar at transferexpress.com backslash webinars. It'll be up in the next couple days here. So, okay. With all of this being said, I hope that if nothing else, we have given you some ammunition and something to think about. Uh, it's a scary proposition. I know it's kind of scary to present the idea of a fundraiser because now you've got uh, several financial responsibilities. You've got to make sure that you get money to the organization you're helping raise money for, plus you got to make money yourself, plus you got to organize all of it. It's scary at first, but once you've done this once or twice, you see that there's a rhythm that happens to a fundraiser. I speak from experience on this one. Um, there's a rhythm that happens and it's not quite so scary once you've done it, I promise. Uh, you might have one or two hurdles to get over, but it's not so bad, guys. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for joining me. It has been a pleasure to be back. This was a fun webinar to do. It's my first one back. Um, and uh, coming up on my 20-year anniversary here at Transfer Express, I've been doing these webinars with you guys for... Gosh, I don't even know, 15 of those 20 years. <laughs> it was nice to be back in the in the pilot seat here. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your Thursday.